Greetings everyone. Hi, uh, this is Pastor Song Bay from Lighthouse Global. I'm coming to you live from Lake Michigan in Chicago, one of my spiritual roots. I'm going to show you a lighthouse, I think. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Today's day 20 on the last day of this uh, Red Alert Prayer for the Remnant. Um, you know, uh, Chicago is one of my uh, spiritual roots. This is where I met the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is where... Um, yeah, I encountered the fire of God and the wind of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but look, look at the city and look at the lighthouse. Um, today's day 20 of the last day of Red Alert, Red Alert Prayer for the Remnant. And uh, it's kind of funny, like this was kind of a spontaneous trip. But here I am in Chicago. If you want to see the skylines of Chicago, it's so beautiful. I love Chicago. And for those of you who don't know my testimony, I went to the University of Chicago down south in Hyde Park. And uh, that's where I had a massive encounter with the Holy Spirit again. I'm going to sing a song for you. Let's sing together. It's an old vineyard song. Uh, today's word is from Psalm 121. Ooh, it's getting freezing. My hands are getting cold. So we'll see how long I can hold this phone. <laughs> I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my hell come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. Oh, how That's how the words go. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Today, yes, in the windy city of Chicago, I'm giving you the last prophetic, last uh, prayer leading for Red, Red Alert Prayer for the Remnant. Um, today's title of this message is, Your Help is Coming from Unexpected Places. I'm going to move around a little bit because it's really freezing cold. But um, God is, this morning I got up and uh, I really felt like the Lord said, um, Help is coming from unexpected places, unexpected people. And Psalm 121 uh, came to me. And uh, the verse, I really love this this verse a lot. Uh, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. It comes from the Lord. And I really felt that um, a lot of the remnant of the remnant have been feeling like uh, they needed help. And, and they just didn't. Help didn't come from the expected places. Some of you have been reaching out for help in places where you thought they would help people that you thought were going to help you. But you know, over the years, I've really learned. And, and this morning, I was really thinking about the Bible and thinking how um, none, of the, uh, none of the people in the Bible um, received help from the people that they expected. I mean, early on in ministry, I noticed, I realized that help never comes from places where you expected. I remember when I launched my ministry uh, in South Korea as a young woman, I would send out newsletters, support letters, and uh, I thought that if people found out that I was going to be in full-time ministry, that my father's friends would help me uh, a lot, but um, none of them really did. And, and I remember just thinking, um, there were so many testimonies of how God led me so far and help normally, usually the help that comes from God, it comes out of nowhere. I'm, I'm just getting you, like I'm encouraging you, the help that God provides it comes out of nowhere from people that you don't even know. And so I want to encourage you to let go of some of the disappointments you had in the past season because I do hear, you know, as a pastor and a, and a prophetic voice and people who, you know, as a person who helps people a lot, a lot of people reach out to me and everyone all around the world are in such desperate places and they need help. You know, some people have to, you know, quit their jobs or make some major life decisions. And, you know, really help can never come from places that you expect it really comes from the lord and sometimes when it's god giving you help when it's the lord sending you help it's from one of the most bizarre places and least people that that you never really expected so i just want to encourage you that your help is coming your help is coming and it's from the lord for you to uh let go of some of the disappointments uh, of how somebody didn't help you or this person didn't step up or you had expectations of 
um, some pastor counseling you and it didn't work out or um, even like in family situations you thought your mom was gonna help your dad's gonna help or your, your husband's gonna help your wife is gonna help and they didn't really step up to the plate just to let go of that because really the help that comes from God comes out of nowhere and when God God is on your side and when God sends help he he makes sure you get that help that you need he makes sure that you go go through things uh, he, he makes sure that you are taken care of. And so I want to encourage you. I feel like God is saying um, your help is coming from unexpected places. And on the last day here, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who are in need of a dire help and serious uh, situation that are in need of rescue, in need of um, help, in need of large financial assistance or whatever the situation is. Father, I pray that you will show them how powerful and mighty you are and you will show them how good of a father you are and that you will send help for them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I, I, I pray that we would trust you. Repeat after me and say, God, we trust you. Repeat after me, God, we trust you for the help that you will send from unexpected places. And uh, we praise you today. Today will be a day of praise and worship. We are praising God in advance for the help that he's sending uh, in cities and, and nations. Uh, people who feel like they're at the end of their rope and people who feel like uh, there's no hope for you. God is saying help is coming. So I just bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So that was the word of the Lord. Another encouragement. This is kind of a side encouragement. Ooh, it is chilly. Ooh, my windy city is blowing the wind Ooh. <laughs> it is getting cold <laughs> here in chicago right at the lakefront um but um another thing i do want to encourage you you know sometimes um um, we get stuck in, in hearing, not being able to hear God's voice. I'm giving you a little tip on how to hear God's voice. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you in front of this little lighthouse and my ministry is called Lighthouse. And, uh, you know, the Lord, the motto of this ministry is hear God and obey. The motto of this ministry is hear God and obey, hear God and obey. And, um, I guess, you know, sometimes when you're, if you're stuck in hearing God's voice, this is one thing that I do that helps me overcome witchcraft, overcome confusion, overcome um, blockages in hearing God's voice, how to operate and flow in the prophetic. I get out of my element. I get out of my comfort zone. I get out of my um, routine and I, I do something totally radically different to refresh my spirit so that I can really hear the Lord, sometimes do the opposite. So, um, you know, um, these trips that I take, it's because I felt kind of stuck and I just felt like there were these voices around me that were not of God and I, I needed a clarity from the Lord. So um, instead of, go well, I don't have a prophet that I can go to really for that. <laughs> Maybe you all log on on my Facebook and you hear a voice of the Lord through me. That's great. That's great. I'm so glad that I can be that for you. But I don't really have that for myself. So um, I just uh, take a trip somewhere where I just have to get out of my routine and just... Um, be in a different context to hear God's voice. So that's one thing that I'm giving you a tip for. So Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning I am praying for Chicago. Um, I feel like even today's the day 20, the last day of the Red Alert prayer, and you led me to Lake Michigan. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that Illinois will shift and change in this hour in Jesus' name, that every unfulfilled promises of God will come to pass in Jesus' name. Another encouragement that God has given me was this, that um, Every word of the Lord that God has spoken, the Lord will not fail you. He will fulfill his promises for you. He will fulfill his promises for you. God, God does not lie. He's not a liar. The enemy is. The devil is. The devil is a liar. I, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I cancel every lie of the enemy over your life. Every doubt that the enemy plants a seed in your spirit, I break that off in Jesus' name. You know, God is not a liar. He's, he's a God of truth. His promises always come to pass. Um, I speak this to you because, uh, you know, here I am in Chicago. It's kind of like, who would have thought that I'll end up here, like, on today, like, today, this day? Uh, like, I didn't plan it, you know. I wasn't planning on it. Some of you are planners, and you, you like to plan. But um, I early on learned that I, I should not plan because it never really works out the way I plan it. But um, here I am today in Chicago because uh, when I was in college launching ministry, actually... Uh, my dream and hope was to buy a house in the south side of Chicago to do ministry to the homeless and to have like a house of power and prayer. 
to uh, kind of like what what Dream Center is doing in LA to convert people and have like homeless come and be delivered and do deliverance ministry in in South Side of Chicago. That was my kind of like a really like I would just like I I I would have given everything for it. That was my dream. Well, obviously that didn't come to pass, and my life took a different turn. My dad suddenly passed away. I had to go back to South Korea, and I gave up on my dream for anything related to Chicago. I gave up on any of the dreams I had about ministering in Chicago, and it's twenty plus years have passed, and here I am back in Chicago preaching to you. Now, and this morning I just felt this weird sense of, I, I got this real like a like a sense of like God's. Magnificent, like God's grandiose. <laughs> I had a sense of God's divine plan that my dream was so small back then to buy a house and do deliverance ministry for the homeless locally. But God's dream is so big that He, it just, I had a sense and I just had a confirmation in my spirit that song. You will do everything he's put in your heart, but in a much better way. Like everything that you had in your the desires of your heart. The sense I had was God was like, everything you dreamt, everything I planted in you since you're a baby, a youth, you know. God is grandiose. I mean, He's the the biggest. He's the biggest God. He's the great God. He will let it come to pass in His way, and it's gonna be so much better than what you've ever thought. It goes along with the word I gave you yesterday. My God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not your ways. Are not my ways. Ooh, and the wind never changes. <laughs> Chicago wind never changes. My hands are freezing now. Ooh. Okay, I got to end soon because it's freezing. But I got up this morning and felt like, goodness gracious, who would have thought that today I'll be standing in Lake Michigan preaching to you like this, even if it's just twelve people <laughs> on Sunday morning? That um, I I breathe into you the fulfillment of God of every prophetic promises that He has given you. There's life coming back to the old promises. There's life coming back to the old prophetic words. Ooh, see the sun shining. There's life coming back right now in your life for the things you've given up in the past. Another inspiration I had this morning. I'm just gonna share everything. Was this quote from Catherine Coleman? Catherine Coleman said, "Some of you know, there's a quote where she says, 'How much does an anointing cost? An anointing costs everything.'" Anointing costs everything, and it may be very personal for me, but that is absolutely right. Anointing costs everything, meaning, you have, when you follow Jesus, you gotta give everything. You gotta give up everything. That's how you get the anointing. I don't have to go into details of all the things that I pay the price for. I paid a lot. You know, I'm still paying <laughs> the price of whatever anointing that that I may have, and you know. Another thing is, super anointed people are unaware of their anointing. Now, now, listen to me when I say those who are truly anointed are free from the anointing. Those who are truly anointed are free from their sense of entitlement to the anointing. They don't demand demand that you recognize them as the anointed. They don't demand you to pay for their anointing. Those who are truly anointed are free from their anointing. So on a normal day, I never really think about how anointed I am. I don't really care, honestly. When I prophesy to you, I don't really care if I'm accurate or not. But anyway, this morning I got up, and uh, that quote really resonated in my spirit. Anointing costs everything. And you know, in the past twenty plus years, Chicago is kind of nostalgic. My hometown. This is where I had massive deliverance from spirit of fear. Um, it was windy city, you know. I was in the most depress depressive, uh, like Hyde Park University of Chicago was so awful. Uh, and that's where I learned spiritual warfare.、Um, I almost got mugged by.、Uh, well, everyone gets mugged there or gunpoint in, in at Hyde Park. Crime was so high here in Southside, and you know. But I always, you know. This was. This is where where the Holy Spirit powerfully met me, and my life completely shifted. This is where I received my calling from the Lord to do Lighthouse. This is where I started off, and then suddenly my life shifted, and I I got pulled out of Chicago of the U.S. and had to go back home. But you know, here I am standing, and I'm thinking, yeah, it it costed me everything, you know, to follow Jesus. But isn't that the gospel? Isn't that what Jesus says? Those who seek to 
preserve your life will lose it those who are willing to lose it will, will gain you know that's the gospel so father in the name of jesus i pray that you'll breathe life into every person's dream that they thought they have lost and that we would understand the, the meaning of true discipleship we would understand the meaning of what it means to be truly a disciple of jesus christ what it means to be uh, a follower of jesus christ in, a, in the simplest way that god today will be a day when the remnant arise with hope and, and power knowing that you will fulfill every word that came out of your mouth that you're not a liar that you you are god of truth and you're magnificent you're so much bigger than our own ways and let us submit to the ways of god even when we don't understand in jesus mighty name and i prophesy and declare revival over this the city of chicago there's been such great evil the lord is saying to you illinois chicago that the evil that has been done in the background of your politics god is going to expose it i hear the lord saying exposure is coming exposure is coming and that word has been redundant in the past few months but i still prophesy to you that that by the spirit of god exposure is coming to illinois politics the lord is shifting and changing god's preparing a new breed of politicians who will arise and, and organize and who will arise and uh, um, govern the city in a godly way i see new breed coming up rising up in this hour divine connections are coming there's going to be an acceleration of revival fire in the city of chicago surrounding regions in jesus mighty name i see um just an acceleration of connections and network that's coming in the next six months. So I prophesy that over you in Jesus' name. I see uh, some weather-related disasters coming and hitting Chicago. I saw really hard frozen, uh, Lake Michigan freezing like really hard. And I feel like the temperature this, summer, this winter is going to be quite cold. It's going to... Um, hit a record low of some sort i just feel like i just saw like 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 michigan freezing up even more and i just hear the lord saying prepare prepare the way of the lord because people in chicago will need a lot of help and uh, even some disastrous situation maybe not this year but i feel like disasters coming to the city of chicago and we need to prepare the surrounding regions even other places like an hour away two hours away you need to prepare for what's coming to chicago shaking is coming so, Father, I pray for an awakening in the uh, ministries within this, this region, in Jesus' name. That, God, there will be divine connections and friendships and uh, prayer teams that, that come in and pray in different strategic locations. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm going to have to end. It's so freezing cold. I'm going to show you the view <laughs> of the lake. Ooh, and the lighthouse. And the sun is so beautiful. And the city. One of my beloved, lo beloved cities in the United States of America, city of Chicago. You will not disappoint me. Every time I feel this mighty wind in Chicago, I always feel like this is the Holy Spirit. Ooh, but today you're very cold. <laughs> Father, thank you for us closing this tw day 20 of a little prayer. I pray that you would encourage the remnant all around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.